Hey, what's up guys? I have a very special interview to share with you today. I recorded a session with my good friend Castle Isla for almost an hour where we talked about a bunch of things that new or even experienced Destiny 2 players can focus on to improve in PvP. This episode was so fun to record. I always have a blast talking with Castle, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Since I'm uploading this video on Christmas, I also wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and I also wanted to thank you guys for all the crazy support you've shown my channel this year. I have a ton of great content coming your way for 2021 and I can't wait to share it with you. To celebrate the holiday spirit, I'd really appreciate it if you'd also take a second after watching this video to go check out Castle's YouTube channel and subscribe. I truly think he is one of the most underrated Destiny channels on YouTube, and I know you'll learn a ton from him if you check out his content. For this video, I mostly use gameplay clips provided by Castle so you can watch him play, and at times we also cut to a private match to illustrate a few gameplay examples. That's all for now, hope you enjoy the video. I want to introduce you guys to my friend Castle. If you're not familiar with him, he's another Destiny YouTuber, covers mostly PvP stuff, although he has a pretty awesome leveling guide for new players, so might be one to check out if you're interested in that. Uh, we have a lot of different topics we want to talk about today. They're kind of all over the map, but all centered around PvP improvement. And so I think we'll just kind of jump around and see where we see where it takes us. So uh, Castle, do you want to kind of start off with telling us like a little bit about like how you got into Destiny and stuff, and then um, you have sort of a story of like the the number one ish thing that you you noticed that uh, started improving yourself as a player, uh, and we can kind of dive into that. Sure. Um, yeah. What got me into Destiny? That's hilarious. So I used to be super into Halo, um, probably similar to a lot of PV PvP players in uh, in the game right now, but. I actually kind of stopped after a while. I took a huge break from gaming and then randomly my roommate bought this game called Destiny. And uh, so he didn't buy it at release or anything like that. And um, started watching him, you know, do these things called raids and they looked pretty amazing. And then I saw him playing in Crucible and I just like 100% brought me back to the days of playing Halo. Just, I think there's just something about the gameplay. I don't know, there's like the mechanics and gameplay in this game just feels so unmatched uh compared to so many other games so anywho i ended up kind of taking over the tv and he <laughs> never got to play again and then here we are but, uh, <laughs> thousands of hours later pvp god yeah, and uh, exactly thousands prominent of hours later. <laughs> that's awesome that's right yeah content creator now yeah he doesn't know anything about pve really but. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're maybe the most specialized uh person i know in terms of content creators because like um I always laugh because like you 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 don't keep great tabs on PVE stuff, but you know every little detail of PvP. Like I bet you could draw a very accurate <laughs> um, top down view of this map from just purely from right. knowledge, <laughs> better right. than just I, about any player I could think of. Uh, yeah, but you I'm don't have any idea how to get the line. anarchy. <laughs> yeah, I know like every spawn trigger line, and I don't know how to get the anarchy. I don't yeah. even know. How to get <laughs> you don't even cards. know what the anarchy is. No, I'm just yeah. joking. So anyway. Which is, um, which <laughs> it's kind of funny because your, your question about like how to get better maybe, maybe i'll start with that one um sure. you know it's kind of like the cold hard truth that like people always ask how do i get better how do i get better and the sad and cold hard truth is the fact that they probably need to stop playing pve and start playing pvp and even though they think they play pvp they probably don't play it anywhere near the amount that they think that they uh or that they, they probably don't play it anywhere near the amount that they should. You know, like when you look at someone like Sir Demetrius and in his videos, he talks about how he does, he has no idea where this one exotic came from, or he, he doesn't have this exotic, or there's a perk that he's like, I have no clue what this is, never heard of this. And it's been in the game for two years and you know, he'll laugh about it, but there's a reason for that. All of those top PVP uh, players don't know that much because they don't play much of the game and I don't blame them They're like they live and breathe in the crucible and that's why they're that good. So for people to You know, it's suddenly just expect to be able to become 10 times better or just even improve at all without putting in Way more time. It's it's kind of like unreasonable. So that's sort of like lesson number one Yeah, cut back on the PVE and you gotta put way more time <laughs> you know fix their their diet yeah it's, so i think that like um in a broader sense what it is is that you 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 get better at, at whatever you focus on right so if you're spending let's say you play destiny for 20 hours a week and you play 18 hours of pve and two hours of pvp like chances are you're probably not gonna improve at pvp very fast um if you flip mm -hmm. that around though 
you know, you might not get as much stuff done in PvE, but like you'll probably, you know, if over the course of like a few months, you'll get drastically better at PvP. Assuming you're, you know, playing and practicing and, you know, actively trying to improve. Yeah, I mean, what like what is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. If you split your time across too many things, you're just not going to be the best yeah. at any of them. Um, so. You know, it's funny actually. At each season, I I feel that way um, because like the, you know, I I like to split my time across both PVE and PVP. Like I really do enjoy the PVE side of the game. And so what happens is like I'll spend like a month or two like leveling and trying to get all the new guns and like doing all this pve stuff and then i feel so rusty in pvp and it's like it takes me like a couple days to like shake off the rust and feel like i can actually play well again whereas like mm -hmm. you know that towards the end or middle of a season when like i've done all the pve stuff and all i'm spending all my time doing you know scrims and trials and like just playing a lot of quick play like my game's so much sharper just because i spend so much more time in the crucible yep for sure man I mean, another one is um, probably this one was like probably the biggest one of the biggest wake up calls for me was uh, like I've always been naturally decent at, you know, FPS games, um, you know, even since I was a kid and playing Halo and whatnot. But the biggest one honestly came recently. Uh, and that was back when I like I, I went hardcore into Fortnite. Um, I, I spent a ridiculous amount of time like playing it, training, getting better playing in those, uh, you know, those qualifiers. And uh, I found the real turning point for me was when I eliminated my fear. And that sounds kind of weird because it's just a video game, but like for some reason, people are naturally afraid of dying or losing or like making a, a mistake in a game. And like, it's just a video game. Like who gives a shit that that's, that's the mentality that you need. And so for Fortnite, like in a BR, um, it wasn't until I just, I didn't care so much about dying and going back to the menu that I really, like my game elevated so much more. And that doesn't mean like go in and make dumb mistakes, but suddenly when you're not playing afraid and you're not playing in fear, you'd be surprised how much better you are just instantly. Because it's like, you know, you hear people say play confident. It's kind of the same thing, like playing, mm -hmm. removing your fear inherently just adds confidence. Um, to your to your gameplay and adding confidence means faster decision making and then faster decision making leads to you know the snowball effect of getting better and then getting better or having better results leads to more confidence and then you know mm -hmm. i think it all started with just not being afraid anymore of yeah um, being in a video game <laughs> so one of the things we were chatting about before we started recording is actually how that ties into stuff like trials so a lot of like newer players not even new players like even like myself sometimes you'll see a a big name that you're coming up against and all of a sudden like you you might play a little different because like you know you recognize that you know big streamer or youtuber or whatever and um you know it's something I, I think i've gotten better about over time like not really worrying about who i'm playing as much but especially like when i was kind of getting started with destiny pvp um you know maybe maybe more into destiny to be like uh destiny 2 pvp when i kind of knew you know who the bigger guys were like you, you see yourself match up against them and like, you know, you might play a little differently because you're either scared or, you know, you're trying to prove something or whatever. And that can kind of throw right. you off a little bit. So, um, you know, I think that that's like a really good tip for people is just to try to like pretend you have no idea who's on the other team and just play the same every game. Yeah. Stop checking d trials report for God's <laughs> yeah. sakes. Like who cares about, uh, who cares? Like mm -hmm. just go in and do your best and do your best to adapt to the way they're playing round after round. Yeah, that's right. actually something I'd chat about uh, with Glow when I had him on this series was uh, like, don't check trials report before the games because like, you're, you're going to psych yourself out one way or another. Either you think that, um, you know, you're playing a bunch of like, you know, one KD players or whatever, and you're, you're like, oh, we definitely have this one. And then things start going bad and you can kind of get tilted because you expect to win and all of a sudden you know, things aren't going your way. Or on the flip mm -hmm. side, you come across like, you know, three KD Slayers who, um, you know, <laughs> you're like, it, it, maybe you win, maybe you lose anyway, but it's like, at least like, you know, it's better, Give I think, not chance. to know, just play, play your best regardless. And, uh, yeah. you know, so anyway, I think that's that's good advice. Yeah. Um, what else? I guess like, well, there's one uh, one thing another thing that i kind of learned a while back was uh from a good friend of mine named Mello. um so when i first got into scrims um 
there's one thing he made me realize like I'm, I'm pretty good at calling plays and controlling the play and like you know being a bit of a team lead but um it wasn't until he kind of pointed out that like i need to practice what i preach and so he used to tell me like if i if i make a if i make a call let's say and and specifically say we should do this or or someone's one shot or xyz he is going to almost blindly follow it you know obviously he's he's gonna try and not do something that is clearly going to make him die or make him lose or whatever but for the most part if i make a call he's committing to it and um i didn't realize how much i wasn't doing that and so like the at the end of the day i kind of realized like committing to a play even though it might not be the best play will always be better than second guessing the best play like if you're in a situation and you have three alternatives or three options that you can you know react to whatever is happening obviously one of them is going to be the best one of them is going to be mediocre and one of them will be the worst decision that you could make out of the three you're better off committing to the mediocre one and having your team also use that same mentality and commit that doesn't mean aping it just means like committing to whatever it is the decision is then second guessing forever and you know deciding to do the best option too late mm -hmm. because you've lost that opportunity so uh that that was just like such an eye opener for me too like if i make a call out or if someone else makes a call out for me uh i gotta make like i gotta listen i gotta commit or vice versa it's, it's i can't second guess i gotta actually i gotta trust them which also ties into like you know everyone says good call outs good call outs um don't lie like you know how often <laughs> he's one watch... shot <laughs> yes thank you like you know how often you can watch a stream and myself yeah. too this isn't i'm not even like pointing the finger at no I, I do it too I, anytime like, you, you do any damage you think that the person's almost right. dead but... or like i'll slide around yeah. a corner and like you know shotgun somebody and they got like 110 health so i did like 90 damage let's say mm -hmm. or, or less than that but anyways um and i'll be like how did that not kill him he's weak or he's one shot you know, and, and quite literally, it's like, no, he isn't. He is not one shot because there isn't a hand cannon out there that's going to do 120 damage or 110 well, damage. And tying that back into your first point, too, it's like if if you're being a good teammate and, like, you know, trusting your other teammates' calls and then reacting off of that, you're, you know, the most optimal thing is to go try to, like, finish the kill if someone is right. that weak. And, and if you give them that false information, they might, get you know, go you're die. Where it's like... You know, because right. because I play differently. If I know someone's literally one shot, I will play a lot more aggressively and try to try to get a hand cannon body shot or whatever it happens mm -hmm. to be. Versus like you know, if someone's has two hundred health, I have to play a lot more carefully because that means I need to hit mm -hmm. you know a lot more of my shots in order to win that engagement. So and you know what'll happen is then they might not trust you in the future if you mm -hmm. keep doing it. Then then suddenly, even if they don't know it, they're going to subconsciously not trust your calls as much. So like. That was another big one for me. Uh, I, I used to be so bad for that, like complaining about a shotgun not one hit killing somebody or like calling out someone's one shot when they're like one and a half or two kind of thing. <laughs> like they're not, it's not quite you accurate or true. You on them. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was a big one for me. Um, and like the complaining thing, it's like, holy crap, like mm -hmm. stop complaining. Like, there is zero there is zero evidence to show that complaining will suddenly make your teammates better fps players or like complaining is going to suddenly make you a better player after you spawn up like just stop complaining and just play well um, on, on the contrary but, it's yeah. it's clogging up the communication and there's you know maybe there is critical information that someone needs to know like someone's health or their exact position or something and and you yeah. know you by relaying that information you could potentially be saving your teammate and helping them win the engagement instead they're you're complaining about you know how fell winters is op or something <laughs> and then mm -hmm. and, and then your team ends up losing that fight that you know maybe your teammate had a chance especially you know destiny is the type of game that can turn around quickly you know one one player makes a big like 1v2 or 1v3 clutch and all of a sudden that can completely change the dynamics of a situation but a lot of times that's relying on you know having good information uh to make those kind of plays exactly yeah so I, I mean yeah it's just so it's so important i remember watching uh there was a big tournament for apex and uh this team had absolutely the best spot in the final circle and but they just they could not decide they were just arguing about what to do um and ultimately they lost uh i think it was actually nice 
nice wig it doesn't matter actually um anyways they, they just they argued to the point where it was too late and at that point in time until they finally committed to something it was game over there was zero percent chance they could actually come out on top mm -hmm. whereas if they literally would have just listened to any one of them if the other two would have just said like okay i disagree but okay let's do it they probably would have won um so yeah it comes up a lot that's but. one of those things uh, that's really important for team plays just to have a very short-term memory for things that went wrong you know it's basically like you have that one if for, for example let's say it's trials like you have basically until the end of that one round where something went wrong to forget about it and then the next round mm -hmm. you know it's it's back to ground zero you have to be ready to mentally reset yeah. and pretend that whatever just happened didn't happen because it's just you know it's it doesn't matter who made the mistake it doesn't help you to yeah. argue about it after the fact another thing i uh i kind of grew to learn is like you know how so many people preach like VOD review and like, mm -hmm. I, I actually agree. VOD review is, is excellent. Um, and I would support that any day, but so just to, for, for people who might not know what that means, like recording your own gameplay and then watching it back to like, see what mistakes you made or what things you could have done better in the future. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, that's a really big, you know, I don't want to say buzzword, but you hear that a lot from, mm -hmm. from like really good players and, and rightfully so, but I I've come to learn that like, there's a level of, of VOD review that you should and shouldn't do. Um, so like if you're not on a pro team, like sometimes I will overanalyze something to death so much so that like the next day I'll be like, you know what? I'm probably never going to be in that exact same scenario ever again. And it, it almost was a waste of time. So um, one thing I've learned or I'm still learning is like what good reviews uh, are versus kind of just wasted mm -hmm. reviews so like taking vague not vague but like taking larger lessons from a review that you've done um and not focusing on like one specific thing like well, how did we lose this yeah. play oh well if he would have done like i did this because i thought he was going to do that blah, blah 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 like yeah that's fine but at the end of the day you're probably not going to be in that exact same scenario where mm -hmm. all six people were positioned where they were um and you're better off just saying like, no, what, what is the common mistake? Like, what, what are the common things I'm doing wrong? Okay, let me just focus on these two things only. Not, don't go and overanalyze one specific play kind of thing. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I feel like that advice too is sort of like, is tailored towards like the type of player that you're giving it to. For example, like you're mm -hmm. a super analytical person. And so you think of like, every little detail like i've been on burnout here with you before where we like ch tested every single spawn point on the map to figure out right exactly like what lines you had to cross in order to force a spawn uh there's a lot of people who are com the complete opposite of that and play purely like on intuition and feel and um i think for those types of players it's like beneficial to watch your reviews because there there might be obvious things that you're not, you're just not aware of that you can catch right. from a or, you know reviewing your own gameplay Whereas, it, like you said, it can be a trap where if you're a super analytical person, you can go down a rabbit hole where you, you'd be better off spending some of that time just practicing as opposed to, like, reviewing, you know, very minute details that might not ever help you again in the future. Yeah, 100%. Um, so one of the things we were talking about before we started recording was basically a list of kind of common mistakes that we see a lot of newer players making. And I feel like there's a lot of things that are pretty common among new players that uh, maybe they're just confused about because they don't know what they don't know that they're doing wrong. So for example, um, I've had several friends now who I have improved their performance in PVP drastically on mouse and keyboard just by helping them choose a more reasonable sensitivity on their mouse. Um, I think, I don't know what the... Do you know if the game starts out at default? I think it's like, I don't know, 15 or something looks sense. It's very high um, yeah, out of the it, box. I mean, it literally goes up. Well, okay, it's new now. Like it's different now than what it used to be. Like, so now it actually goes up to a hundred, your look sensitivity. <laughs> yeah. and, and it wasn't like that. I think at launch, it was like maybe capped at 15 mm -hmm. or 20, but either, either way, way for reference, I'm at five out of a hundred. So, and that's yeah, at 800 exactly. DPI. That's pretty common i think for you know to be in that range for m most good players i know um i know we, we were talking about like uh, uh walla who's a very very good player for anyone who doesn't know him um is a you know probably one of the top players right now and a lot of people in like the i don't know like higher level pvp scene kind of think that he has a pretty high sensitivity 
But the thing is, like, his sensitivity is actually very low compared to the average Destiny player on PC just because so many people have their sensitivity at the default or, you know, very, very, very high that it's actually quite a bit um, you know, higher than, than his, who's, who's already considered a high sensitivity player by, you know, a lot of the community. Yeah, yeah, because, like, I remember when I made a video on specifically this topic about how, like, you know, don't just compare your sensitivity to someone. You got to compare your DPI. You got to make sure you're on the same FOV. And like, even though FOV doesn't change the in-game sensitivity, you know, that's calculated. It, it changes the feel of it. And like Walla, you know, he's, he's around like 20 to 25 centimeters, I think per 360, um, or j to make it easier, like you said, DPI, right? Like you're, you're at what? You said 800, you're running 800 five DPI. sensitivity mm -hmm. times 800 DPI. So all I have to do is take five times 800. So your like quote unquote true sense or your you know your EDPI if you will would be four thousand call it units mm -hmm. <laughs> sensitivity units. Um, I remember like I, I've I've had at least a dozen people come to me after my video and ask or talk about what they were running theirs at, and I, I'm talking like there were people running true sensitivities. So again, for for the people listening, that's your in game multiplied by your DPI of like. 20,000 okay like 20,000 edpi or like 15,000 edpi and you're at 4,000 you know i'm at let me see uh nine times 400 i'm at 3600 i'm just just a little bit below you and like walla i think he i want to say he's at like I think it's around maybe seven, 7 k yeah, so somewhere right? in that like, neighborhood. So it's even four hundred, maybe. Yeah, quite a bit lower than. So even um, then, like, right, yeah, exactly, seven thousand compared to twenty thousand. So Walla, mm -hmm. considered to be the extremely high sense player, is three times slower than most of the sensitivities that people come to me with. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I, t <laughs> it's funny because I'll say like, trust me, just slow it down and see how it feels. They're like, no, nah, I hate that. Um, or my mouse pad isn't, isn't big enough. I'm like, okay, well get a different mouse pad. Like I, you know, you have a couple of options here, at least try it and see how you feel. Cause I, I think you'd be surprised at how much better you'll be way worse for a week, way worse, mm -hmm. but then you'll be a lot better, uh, you know, over time. But, yeah. I was yeah. talking about my friend Orpheus who he, when I first met him played very high sensitivity. I don't know what it was, it was exactly, but it was incredibly high. And, uh, me and a friend had a sit down with him. <laughs> we're like, yo, man, we, we got to get the sensitivity in check. Cause he was trying to get better at PVP. Um, and you know, he wasn't a big PVP -er at the time, but we kind of, he, he wanted to get more into it. And so we got him on a more reasonable sensitivity level. And, uh, you know, like over the course of like a month or two, he struggled to kind of adapt to it, but then he became like a really good player over time. And, uh, you know, his aims, you know, great now. So it just takes some practice, I think, to get used to. The, yeah, the you'll general always lower be worse sense. Get better. Yeah. Uh, one thing I think that is confusing for people is that when you go to buy a gaming mouse, you'll they're they're marketed for these high DPIs often. You know, you'll <laughs> yeah. you'll see on the box like goes up to twelve thousand DPI or whatever. <laughs> it's like the thing like you know most good FPS players, regardless of the game, are not playing anywhere near their maximum DPI that their mouse can do. You know, typically no. it's like 400, 800, 1600 maybe. Yeah, very, very of, few go. Like 2000, yeah, like, and that, that's still reasonable, <laughs> but like, you know, 12,000 and then, you know, you obviously got to keep in mind too that your in-game sensitivity is relative to your DPI and like the, you know, sensitivity pick in the game. So if yeah, you're playing exactly. a really high DPI, you're probably going to have a pretty small number in terms of your, you know, in-game in, sensitivity. In the game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Big yeah. time. Um, so what other mistakes do you see in a lot of new players? making when they kind of start getting more into pvp i think um okay this is funny so someone asked me i won't i won't name their name but if they're listening then they'll know someone asked me today um they said i'm struggling in my 1v1 environments um you know in like just like a gun duel what what kind of tips do you have for me and then they went on to say actually i'm just i'm struggling you know winning a lot of my a lot of my duels regardless and uh, we kind of went down the road of like things that they can do and I, I think the number one thing um, that I would recommend or that I notice people making mistakes on is like understanding when they've lost a fight so 
I, you'll probably hear this commonly know or commonly talked about as like knowing when to disengage you know you'll hear that a lot um and that's totally true that's 100 what i'm trying to talk about is knowing when to disengage but for me it, it's sort of like knowing when you're dead so if i if i decide to engage on it doesn't even matter if it's one person or i think it's one and it turns out to be two or it's a 1v3 or a 2v3 whatever it is that i'm doing if i am engaging in a fight it is so important to know when you've lost the fight or when you have a chance, like before it actually happens. So if I engage in a fight and I know there is a 0% chance that I'm going to get out of that fight, like no matter what I'm committing, balls to the wall, like I, I am 100% committing till I die, which is mo most fights, right? Most people engage in a fight. And then, yeah, they just are obviously fighting until they die. But there's actually a ridiculously large amount of those engagements that I bet you they could have got out alive and, and like, not lost the fight. Like, mm -hmm. they got into the engagement, and then there was a point in time, there's a line that they cross where it's it's game over. You've lost this fight. Or or maybe you get lucky and you win, but it's there is no turning back. Um, but up until you cross that line, that, you know, that imaginary line, you still have the option to continue fighting or to disengage. And I think that the most common mistake when I look at other people playing, like my brother, for example, um, it's, it's that. It's not if they just have so much trouble understanding where that line is um, and when they're about to lose a fight that they think they can win, that they could have actually got out of kind of thing. And so, you know, a common... Like what? What is it? One one shot away from cover, I think, is like mm -hmm. kind of the buzz the buzz term or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't say that much, but it, it's honestly not a bad like buzzword or, or term. Um, it's it's pretty pretty accurate because like if you slide out, especially on a titan, for God's sakes, if I slide out like this, and I'm trying to engage in a fight like over here, um, I'm actually probably okay. But that's only because I have cover here and I have cover right here, so I know I I can you know slide away like that um but in a lot of cases you know maybe this wall here doesn't exist and it's on a different map or whatever and like many people they'll slide out to fight like good luck good luck getting back to to this and so at that point in time you haven't even started the fight like you haven't even shot your gun yet and you you're all you've already crossed the line like you've already crossed that line where there is no turning back so you better commit unless maybe you know, there's a corner behind you that you can like dodge around. That's my shield because I'm not a hunter, <laughs> but, and maybe you can disengage, but like, it's, it's kind of, it's just knowing and assessing your situation, whether it's, can I get back behind cover or just knowing, have I lost this fight? Like, let's say I slide around a corner and uh, you headshot me first. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Even if I hit a headshot first, like you'd think, oh, perfect. I, I can three tap this guy. I hit, I hit a headshot. Like my first bullet was a headshot excellent haven't missed yet but they they shot you first so like you've lost unless they miss you've lost uh and of course like not everyone has perfect aim your opponents might miss and you might win but you really have to be careful with that so if i if i get into an engagement and i know i didn't have the first bullet i'm like already that that instant i'm either committing to my next two shots or i'm disengaging um so, you know, that that's just like one example out of many, obviously, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a, it's a smart example. way to approach the game. Uh, I always say that about snipers. Like I, I pretend that like the sniper I'm playing will never miss because that's often <laughs> the case, uh, especially when you play against better players. Like a lot of times they're so good that they rarely do miss. And, you know, basically having a good escape plan like that, where if you see a sniper, you know, the red glint out there that you can actually get away. Is something that's very very important i think it's it's a like a tough nuance because um you know there's a lot of like i don't know like we were talking about at the beginning it's kind of hard to uh differentiate between like playing with confidence and not being afraid to die but then at the same time <laughs> and being too cocky. yeah it's like you know it's a fine line to to draw between the two because obviously like you know you do want to play with confidence and not be too worried about dying but at the same time like um it's an important skill i feel like to start to understand you know what does it look like to to be able to like you know survive in a lot of different situations and sometimes in pvp mm -hmm. i'll just practice that like i'll literally spend some time um just you know like uh, 
getting damaged and then just trying to get get out. And I'm a, I'm amazed sometimes like how slippery you can be and get out of certain situations that you know they seem like they're almost uh, inevitable death, but you can kind of skirt away, get out of there. Mm -hmm. That's that bottom tree arc strider for you, right? Yeah, <laughs> that one helps <laughs> for sure. They massive um, bonkers too. Yeah, or like you know, you, let's say you you I don't know, go around a corner and and you start shooting, and it's like I said, two people, like you've lost, like just like. Or sorry, if you commit, you've lost. So mm -hmm. either either decide to commit with the full intent to tell your team that, you know, one of them is two-thirds health and the other one is maybe one-third health or whatever, right? Like, it's like chances are you'll hit one of them twice and or one each of them once or you'll get lucky and you'll hit one two times and the other one once kind of thing. So, you know, you either commit and have with the full intent that you've died, uh, but with the intent that your teammates are going to go in and wipe them up and, and, you know, get that trade for you kind of thing, or maybe even come out on top and get both of them or like just backpedal immediately and leave. Um, if you've gone into that engagement, like you, you've got to make those decisions like right away. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a huge, huge mistake that I see people, especially when I do review someone's gameplay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they just, they never seem to disengage when they could have and, they they lost before they even knew it well in 3v3 modes especially that really comes into play because um you know every person on your team's life really becomes important in those situations and so if you die let's say you're playing uh competitive for example and you die and you get picked off all of a sudden then your team is in a 2v3 situation where a, you know a good team is going to take that advantage and you know capitalize on it by snowballing and uh, collapsing mm -hmm. on your teammates and, and then all of a sudden it's a team wipe and if they're really a good team they'll start using that to be able to control the map and force you to spawn split where yeah, you uh, be you're, split, spawn cycle yeah, you're split from your your team and uh that can snowball into a loss very very quickly so you know i think yeah. especially in the more competitive modes it is important to be able to play, know how to play your life that that is one of the biggest lessons i learned to, like specifically from scrims was that yeah exactly that like we, you're you're in a fight you die so then it's a 3v2 and you know you your teammates like they somehow they're surviving pretty long you spawn up because whatever those are on a seven second respawn and then you know you think oh let me go back in there and help them but by in the travel time from you from your spawn point to go to where they were by the time you get there they've killed your two teammates and now they have a probably a 2v1 because you know one of them probably would have died in that in that fight mm -hmm. uh, on, on the opposing team and now it's a 2v1 and you've died right and it's like what are you doing so like i i learned to just like let go it's like nope that teammate or those two teammates or whatever it is like i mean now if you watch tournaments you'll hear them you'll, you'll hear them tell their teammate like just do trade if you can we're waiting for you like they've already recognized you're gonna die we're going to sit here and wait for you to die. Just try and trade because then it's, you know, it negates their kill. Yep. Um, so that, yeah, that, that was huge. I mean, that kind of only applies to like, it doesn't really apply to trials, obviously, but huge, huge, huge for, for scrims and for, for comp. Well, even in trials sometimes, like, you know, if, if you do get in a really bad situation, you know, and you know that you can't get out for, you know, if you are able to take one of them with you by, you know, maybe floating a door with mm. a shotgun or something, Maybe you're not going to win like a 1v3 in that situation, but like, you know, if your team's away from you, um, getting that one kill can kind of force them to play, you know, to play, play the res potentially. So that, you know, I think there's some value potentially in yeah, trials true. as well. Um, What else? Okay, this is super, super small. Uh, like, and I guess it's funny, like all of these little topics are actually videos that I'm going to be making over the next few months, like in depth on each one so I can do a better job of explaining and teaching. But um, you know, this is such a little one that so many people seem to screw up. And this is again, for me, just reviewing, uh, friends, friends who play and whatnot, who are trying to get better. And that's with their shotguns. So this doesn't apply to you, you folks that use a sniper, but, uh, knowing when to hip fire and when to ADS your shotgun, it's like, sounds like it's so simple. And you'd think, yeah, ADS dude, like that adds, that's going to make you have a larger one hit kill range. So just always ADS and, you know, Maybe they have double shotgun targeting, so the ADS faster. Maybe they have snapshot, whatever. But like, people forget that like within a certain range, like it doesn't matter. 
I don't need to ADS to kill you. Um, mm -hmm. And so many times when I'm reviewing someone's gameplay, uh, they miss their eight, they miss their shot because they like decided to slide ADS shotgun or they decided to like jump ADS shotgun. And I, I do do those things a lot, obviously. Like I'm, if I jump up, I'm probably going to ADS if I'm, if I'm a little high, but they'll, they'll put so much emphasis on ADSing and then aiming. So they're, they're, they're putting two actions in front of themselves to get that kill instead of just one action, which is click a button, L literally just aim and shoot. Um, so the, the, the term bot shoddy, you know, like Calico and his like bot shoddy videos, um, it's sometimes actually a really effective tool, not, not necessarily walking, you know, but <laughs> yeah. like, no, I actually, I noticed whenever I'm shotgunning, uh, like several months ago, I like made a commitment to try to start just hip fire shotting more often and Thank my you. consistency went up tremendously. Through the roof, I, right? I, I, and at this point now it's like, I try to only ADS when like, I'm really far from someone oh, and I, I need that, you know, maximum pellet tightness, I guess, from it. And, uh, so it, I really do try to like hit fire, especially like, um, when I'm jumping around a lot and stuff like that, I feel like I, my aim gets better mm -hmm. when I'm just hip firing as, as opposed to trying to ADS. And, and like the way I like to kind of explain to people when I do talk about it is like, if you are hip firing, you know, you got this big green circle, which goes away when you're ADS. So you have this nice big, or sorry, it's mine's green. You have the reticle, which is, you know, this big circle and your brain has one thing to focus on. And that is the instant, the opponent, you know, come over here. Um, like just come, come around the corner. Like if I'm waiting here or if I'm like, not sure what you're going to do. And then you decide to slide out. I have only one, oh, sorry. I kind of walked in front there, but anyways, <laughs> I only have one objective and that is to click the button, the instant the target comes onto my screen. And so a hundred percent of my brain is focusing on just hitting that shot, not missing this enormous green circle when you come around the corner. Right. So, uh, whereas if, if I like ADS or if I see someone is around the corner and I know they're close, like if I, if you're there and I decide to commit and you're like right here, you know, why, why would I, you're right there. Like, why would I ADS that I, I'm going to absolutely kill you. Right. Mm -hmm. If I just hip fire, uh, instead of ADS. So a lot of people will mess up their aim if they, when they do that. And so that's kind of a common thing that I see. Well, um, the again, other thing with that is the radar too. You, when you're when you're hip firing, you still have access to your radar, right? So you're not losing that information Total. for a split second, which you know, that could potentially be a huge deal, especially when you're in a shotgun fight. You're at close quarters with someone. If you see that you know all of a sudden they move from one quadrant of the radar to another, or they you know they become mm -hmm. that that middle part of it where you know that they're very close to you, like that information yeah. can be crucial. So it's you know very yeah. valuable. Or like if they're if someone is weak, if someone has 130 health instead of 200, guess what? That's like way less health. You don't need to ADS. Even from far away, you know, if you're weak, you can kill someone with a hip fire shotgun from pretty far away when they're weak. So, um, yeah, you know, it's... I don't want people to suddenly stop ADSing. You need to ADS if you're, if you're out of range, but in inside range, you just don't need to. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the little things too that I think a lot of people don't realize about shotgunning is what each pellet does roughly like 22 or so. I don't, I'm not sure what the number is like 22 to yeah, 24 the numbers pellets, are weird. They round something yeah. like that. So anyway, um, if you think about that, if you do a hand cannon headshot or even what a body shot, like a, a headshot is going to deal 70 damage with like a 140. So that's basically means that you have to hit like three to four less pellets, um, and still get a kill as, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to hitting all of them to get that one hit yeah. kill totally i mean then there's like the whole there's like the quick draw glitch um you know when you're in the air when you're sliding all that stuff that stuff makes it so much easier too because now like you can hand cannon someone quick draw glitch finish them off or if you shotgun someone you know and let's say you were like oh wow i listened to castle i shotgunned him and he's weak i didn't i didn't get my one hit kill because i didn't ads well that's fine just switch back to your hand cannon and you could probably kill him you know if you if you quick draw glitch to a hand cannon and i shouldn't expect people or everyone to be able to do this obviously but you can switch to a hand cannon for example pretty quickly and put one bullet into them while you're back pedaling and still kind of win that engagement so yeah i don't know that that's a seemed like a small topic, but it's, it's a very common mistake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's um, something I think a lot of players can do much better. And you have a whole video on uh, peppering, right? 
That's right. Yeah. Pe- one that you covered. Yeah. So, th- I mean, this stuff would be kind of more like chip damage, so to speak, like mm-hmm. doing a bit of damage in order to then do something. But yeah, peppering is another thing that you're right. Good point. People don't do enough of. Um, like if they get someone weak, if I, if I have plenty of shotgun ammo and I get someone weak and they're running away, like two seconds go by, let's say, and they're on 10 recovery, you know, and I, I don't know the numbers off by heart, but let's just say it's like four seconds for them to start recovering. But two seconds go by. I mean, if I just do, like I did 19 damage there, so I could shoot from even way further and still do one damage. If I just do one damage two seconds after, you know, you decided to disengage from our fight while you're trying to run away, I've effectively reset your your health regen. Like I, I've reset it completely at that two second mark. So now maybe instead of a four second timer for you to start getting your health back, you've now let two seconds go by plus another four seconds has to go by. So now it's six seconds. So all of a sudden, just by doing that, which, you know, poking, peppering, I've made you go from a 10 recovery, you know, stat build to like a zero recovery stat build, Mm -hmm. um, just from, just from doing that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's true. That's something I wouldn't even call that like a mistake. That's just something I do not see people doing at lower, uh, levels of play. Yeah. I think a lot of new players like feel like if they can't get the kill, it's not even worth like trying to take a shotgun shot or whatever. Um, it's actually right. something I notice a lot when I stream. Like people say, "Oh, you think you have a sniper or something?" <laughs> so like they'll see me right. take a shotgun shot from pretty far. But that's like exactly what I'm doing. Is try when I have someone weak, like I just want to keep ticking them with a little bit of damage, just so I can get the kill before their shield comes back. And like I'll use, you know, even if I know mm-hmm. the shotgun's not going to kill them from range, like if that's what I have, uh, you know, available to make their shield not come back, I'll use it. Right, because obviously, if you if you were like, yeah, hundred percent, I'm going to hit this hand cannon shot, you would just shoot them with that. And- and kill them but mm-hmm. either a you might not have it out b you might not have well yeah you might not have time to switch to it or c you might be in the air and you might miss like it yeah whereas a shotgun just shoots a bunch it's a massively widespread of yep. pellets, so <laughs> you're, you're gonna one of them is gonna hit spread it's pretty pretty exactly. handy for that yeah cool uh any other things you'd like to cover um here's a fun one paying attention to the kill feed and that is another one that mellow my, my an old friend of mine taught me um was like in this again only really plays to comp or scrims but like just pay attention to the kill feed so knowing how many people are alive and knowing who's alive like oh you're playing against person a b and c a person a is the sniper well when the sniper's dead like pay attention to that like the kill feed will tell you who died and you it's so beneficial to know right off the bat like, oh, wait, the last guy alive is, is a sniper. Push him. Like, everybody push him together because he'll get overwhelmed. Or they don't have their sniper up. Don't be afraid to challenge now with with whatever gun that you're using kind of thing. So um, I say it's funny because literally I'm playing Warzone just for, you know, to relax with my brother the other night. And, like, we get in a fight and and he backed off and he didn't commit with me. And it's because he thought that there were two people left when there was only one. And that last person was weak. And so e- even though I'm like shouting, there's one left, he's weak or whatever, like, you know, you're caught up in the moment. He, he doesn't hear that, whatever. Um, we talked about it after. And I was like, remember, like the kill feed will tell you, like the kill feed showed that mm-hmm. I killed the other three people on the on the squad. And he had, it just was like, what? Um, so that, <laughs> that kind of made me like, yeah. then I added it to the list of things to make a video on someday. It's like, or, you know, a part of a video and like, pay attention to your kill feed and and that'll help you a lot with uh, with your decision making yeah i think especially in competitive and trials that is very very helpful advice because um you know a lot of times you'll hear good teams do stuff like that where they'll call out oh hit the snipers down you don't have to worry about you know the sniper for a second uh that that can you know change your strategy on the fly we can kind of call an audible Mm -hmm. to go you know play differently for a second because um you know which player happens to be dead so yeah really really good advice yeah i mean probably the probably the absolute last thing to help people um i'm i'm gonna plug someone's channel here his name is golden gaming and i think he makes incredible content he just started out and one of the things he he describes in one of his videos is uh these like levels of shotgun play it's like how you know shotguns with big on beginners shotguns on like an intermediate level shotguns at an expert level and i have i have noticed that 
the better the higher and higher you go in level of play the less and less a shotgun is used as an action versus a reaction so like the best players will always play their primary for i'm talking about shotgunners right now mm -hmm. um obviously like snipers need to go for a pick and whatnot but like they will play primary out first no matter what and they they their shotguns nine times out of ten obviously there's there's the odd time where they have to make a play just by pushing it with the shotgun but nine times out of ten their shotguns are there as as a reaction you know it's like they're they primary out someone pushes and then they like they do that right they i just a quick little back pedal quick draw glitch right there and I can kill anyone who pushes at me. So I don't need to like treat it as an actionary. It's probably not the right word, but I don't need to treat it as an action. I can treat it as a reaction the whole game. And it's just like my get out of jail free card if someone pushes me. You know, that's still mm -hmm. okay. Your primary play will get better because you're using your primary 10 times more. You're probably going to naturally team shot more without even realizing it. Um, so if I had to give someone an advice on how to get better with shotgunning, it would actually be to use it less. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, uh, cause you mentioned sniping as well. And actually that's one thing I notice a lot when I play, especially when I play trials with people who are kind of newer, like I played with a couple of friends over the weekend, uh, who don't play, you know, a whole lot of PVP. And, uh, a lot of times you'll see new players like wanting to put on a sniper. And the reason I kind of recommend usually not doing that in trials, if you're kind of like getting comfortable with it is that people tend to become very over reliant passive? on it they would become oh, passive yeah. but not only that because they keep their sniper out most of the time uh, unless they're like an absolute you know crack shot with a sniper a lot of times they're going to be missing their shots and what that means is that they don't have their primary out and so they're not going to be contributing on team shot opportunities mm -hmm. so it's like your teammates are potentially getting the enemies you know within one shot of dying and it's like if that person instead of having their sniper out the whole time had their primary out just to contribute one bolt like one body shot of damage that was the maybe the difference between a kill or not a kill uh, mm -hmm. and I, I just i see it so frequently it's one of the, the reasons when i see new players like trying to snipe in something like trials like i kind of like cringe because i'm like man you'd, <laughs> you'd, you'd be so much more beneficial to your team if you just had just, a primary, just, just right? had a primary yeah because because even yeah. if it's even if you're using a pulse rifle and you hit one body shot burst that might be enough that another player on your team can you know use that extra damage to get a kill Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. And I get that and it all comes off of like committing to committing and listening to your team too. Like yeah. It it definitely like every little thing adds up. It's it's a huge snowball effect when you start uh, you know, just focusing on one thing at a time and then adding something else to focus on, then adding one thing to focus on. I feel like people get too overwhelmed when they try and fix ten things at once. It's like your golf swing. Um, you know, I, I I've golfed like my whole life and god when you try and fix too many things at once <laughs> like good luck like yeah. gg you might as well leave you just pick one or two things only mm -hmm. forget about the rest once you get those down they'll naturally continue to improve as you focus on the next one or maybe two things kind of thing so yep. yeah but totally agree anyways this is a lot of fun man yeah um thank you for coming on the the show so to speak <laughs> it's been fun chatting with you i'm sure people will get a lot of benefit out of this uh, like we mentioned you have a lot of videos that you're planning that will cover a lot of this stuff in depth. Um, can you drop your socials and how people can find you on the internet? Sure. So um, I typically go by Castle, but because social media names are really tough to get nowadays, uh, all of my platforms are Castle is live. So literally on YouTube, on Twitter, um, Twitch, Instagram, all of them are just at castle is live so yeah if you just search that on youtube that's how you would find my channel and um i would say i am 90 percent pvp on the channel it's uh, mostly just to teach people how to get better and play better but also i do like to do pretty in-depth stuff like uh the you know the behemoth guide or the fragments and aspects mm -hmm. i really like to dive into the the nitty-gritty so if yeah. you're into that stuff um yeah hopefully you enjoy the content yeah, absolutely any big uh, video projects people should be looking out for coming up i think right now i have finally taken on i've taken on the task of truly truly finding a way to make people have a routine to get better uh, because i find that a lot of videos out there with fully good intentions talk about you know top 10 tips to, to get better at pvp but I really want to actually just find a, a routine and say, look, do, do X, Y, Z like daily do this now. Okay. Step three is to do this. Um, and I kind of want to just 
see if I can string together an exact set of tasks for people to do. So that mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest project that I'm working on that I'm pretty excited about right cool. now. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. I'm excited to see what happens with that. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you again for having uh, or for coming to talk with me, and I will uh, make sure everyone can find all your stuff. All right, man. <laughs> all right, dude. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, it's a better map next time on uh, trials, hey? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, dude. Wow, what an awesome talk! I always love chatting with Castle about anything related to Destiny PvP. If you liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up rating and also head over to Castle's channel and leave a comment on his most recent video, letting him know that you found him through this collaboration. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please be sure to do so. I have a ton of awesome videos coming your way soon that I can't wait to share with you. I stream each week over on Twitch. You can catch me live at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. We also have an amazing community discord that you can join with almost 7,000 members. The link to join is discord.gg slash pattycakes. That's all for now. Catch you guys next time.